Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of uh, Critting Your Role, an actor's guide to role-playing. Um, if you guys haven't figured it out by now, I try to follow a kind of theme. Um, I generally record these in um, sessions of three uh, because with how my meds work and everything, that just tends to be... Uh, how long I can record, and it makes it easier to not record every week. Um, and of those three, uh, the first one generally tends to be about something physical. Uh, the second one tends to be about something vocal. And the third one uh, tends to be something about theory, um, acting theory and kind of the mental inside processes of acting that um, a lot of, uh, depending on the school of thought that you, um, and the, the school of acting that you ascribe to, um, a lot of schools uh, and thought processes on acting will put a major emphasis on one over the other. The physical outside in, which involves you know your physicality, your vocal quality, things like that. Uh, there are a lot of actors that will put a large emphasis on that and ignore the internal aspects of it. Uh, when you go the exact opposite direction, you have people that everything is about the internal aspects of it and the, the physicality uh, is kind of an afterthought. Um, I'm of the personal belief that a good performance requires uh, both knowledge of physicality um, and uh, understanding of the intellectual side and motivations and things like that. So um, today, I actually want to touch on something, uh, kind of expand uh, on something we talked about last week. Last week, we talked about um, the system, uh, the Stanislavski system, or um, basically the idea of how would this make me feel if I was in this exact situation and what would those feelings make me do uh, being a great way to start role-playing your character. You get into their mindset as opposed to your own. Um, and I want to talk about the physical implications of that because that is a, that is a very emotions-based internal acting style and I tend to uh, prefer to start internally and then go external uh, to the physical things um, and that's just me personally again lots of different schools of thought out there for this um, uh, but what I'd like to talk to uh, today about is the fact that what a lot of people don't realize is um, okay I've, I've internalized my character I know what feelings I have you know, I know what, how this makes me feel, and because this makes me feel this way, I'm going to take this action. You'll get to that point. Um, but you'll think that, oh, well, if this makes me feel sad, then physically I should do this. <laughs> or if this makes me feel angry, physically I should do this. <sighs> oh, I am so angry. Um and uh, the truth of the matter is we as humans express emotions uh, on a, a, a massive spectrum physically. There are some people that express um, the same emotion physically very, very differently depending on their mental state, depending on other things that are happening in their life, depending on their previous experiences. Maybe they have expressed themselves physically um, in a, uh, a bout of anger that caused someone to get hurt. And so now when they get angry, they're very reserved or something like that. There's so many different ways to physically express an emotion. Um, and I challenge you to the next time your character uh, is doing something like that, like my favorite example of this barbarian barbarian very uh popular D, D character grog uh everybody loves grog and when he goes into a rage he does a uh very typical example of what people think of when you're overcome 
with rage. Is, I'd like to go into a rage. And he just gets very physical and... Uh, and that is one possible way to do this. Um, that is not the only way to uh, go into a rage. Uh, and I'm actually going to use myself as an example here. Due to my background and the things that I've endured and things like that, um, physical displays of emotion like that, um, I actually trained myself out of. It was one of the things I started learning martial arts uh, for. Uh, and um, uh, it's, it's, it's not something that, that has ever been acceptable in my family, these physical displays of rage. However, there have been instances where I have been truly enraged. Not like mad or, you know, furious truly enraged to the point where my rage had taken control of my thought process. And when that happens to me personally, I don't yell. I, um, I don't hit things. I don't, um, you know, get this really, you know, angry look on my face and just walk around. I become very, very calm and very, very single-minded. And that's when there are very, there are very, very few people who have, who have truly seen me uh, in a rage-induced state and truly see me angry. I have been upset over things, uh, and you guys have seen me rant and things like that. But if you ever truly see me angry, I am a very terrifying person because I become very logical. Um, my pain receptors, I stop... Um, I stopped feeling pain. Um, and so because I don't feel pain, pain is the natural response to, you know, it, it tells you to stop doing something. Um, it makes me a very dangerous kind of person because like you can hit me and punch me and things like that. And I won't stop. I won't even try to protect myself because I don't feel it. I will have a very singular, um, goal in mind. Uh, and, um, some of, I think the greatest villains in, um, cinema have had similar reactions to rage. And it's an, it's an incredibly difficult thing to pull off, uh, because you can't just simply be monotone. That's, that's more of shock, which is another very, very bizarre, uh, emotion to, um, exhibit and it's, and it's something that if you've never dealt with it before it's very difficult to emulate um but you 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 kind of turn into this this thing where you still have a little bit of anger on your face but you start speaking monotone and you become very precise in what you are saying And you'll start to ignore normal conventions like personal space and other things like that. And it's really unsettling and it's really terrifying. And I think a barbarian that when they go into a rage, instead of... <laughs> becoming this very calm, collected, almost sadistic person um, uh, would be a very, very cool way to deal with rage. And so that's what the, the entirety of this is, is, is um, physicalizing your emotions um, can be very obvious. You can go the grog route, and I'm not. And I'm not saying Travis Willingham is doing anything wrong. It fits his character perfectly. Um, he does it very, very well, and I think it's it's brilliantly done. Uh, however, what I'm trying to say is, if you think that is the only way to show rage, uh, then you are wrong. The same thing uh, can be true about uh, fear as well. Fear is a very common thing to have 
in uh, role-playing experiences, especially if you start uh, playing some of the more gothic horror style role-playing games, uh, or if your setting itself is set in a horror setting, like um, uh, Dungeons & Dragons have those, has the Ravenloft setting, which is this gothic horror. And uh, I can tell you from personal experience, um, if you play Curse of Strahd, there are certain places in Curse of Strahd that are absolutely terrifying. Um, there's a free introductory adventure. I don't know if it uh, exists anymore. It might be on the DMs Guild called Death House, which is designed to be an introduction to Curse of Strahd. Um, and it is terrifying. It is, uh, uh, is brilliantly written. Um, and so fear, again, can uh, show in a, a bunch of, of very, very different ways. You can have the classic, oh, my God, I'm so scared. And, and where you close, you physically close yourself off from it. Or you can be um, uh, in the realm of uh, I suffer from anxiety. And uh, if I get put into a dangerous or fearful situation, I can have a panic attack. Um, and so panic attacks, you can start hyperventilating, um, can sometimes happen. Um, one of the strange things I've had happen to me during a panic attack, which is 100% normal, it just kind of seems to go against conventions, is you become irrationally angry at things. Um, because you have all this adrenaline and stuff rushing through your body and therefore uh, you go into fight or flight mode. And instead of going into flight mode, you go into fight mode. Um, and so a natural reaction to fear could be to get angry um, and to start lashing out at people, you know, even your own party members and things like this. And a lot of this will depend on the cohesiveness of the group that you play with and how open they are to having you know very realistic portrayals for someone that suffers from panic attacks on a daily basis um being put in a situation where i have to deal with having panic attacks in a game that i'm attempting to uh use to get out of my own mind uh i would not be comfortable with um however um other people may not be, and and they use it for therapy and things like that as well to, to, to help with stuff. So, uh, again, this is something that you have to kind of figure out with your group. Um, but really um, look into different ways and, and think about different ways to physically express your uh, emotions. Uh, because, again, if, if everything is in here, that's great for you, and it will help you to make decisions based on character motivations versus, um, you know, mechanical motivations. However, um, it doesn't help the rest of the table to be able to role play with you. You know, you may be role playing in your own mind, but the rest of the table is just seeing you, you know, make decisions and stuff like that. So physicalizing your emotions is very important. Um, and understand that there are, uh, you know, there there should be some limitations. Again, if you do the grog like rage, rah, and you slam your fist on the table and pull an Ann Wheaton and, and mess everything up, uh, people are going to be upset with you. So, again, some restraint should be required. Um, but, yeah, think, uh, think about different ways to physicalize and, and how your character personally would physicalize this. Like I said... Um, I have a barbarian that I play. Um, he is uh, uh, 100% um, an allusion to Grog. Uh, his name is Corn. Uh, it's like uh, what you eat, but with a K. And uh, he uh, uh, he is not uh, a uh, berserker barbarian. He's a totem barbarian, and so he he plays a little bit differently. Um, but when he goes into a rage, I, I tend to do that exact same thing as well. Um, but I would love to see someone play a barbarian, and when they become enraged, they become like me when I become enraged, and they become very calm and precise. Uh, I think that would be very, very cool. Or playing someone who, when they become terrified, they start becoming irrational uh, and start to uh, just make decisions based on, you know, getting out of the danger or anything like that. You know, all of these are, are, are wonderful ways to play your characters. All of them have physical aspects that will allow you to show the other players what you're feeling without you having to sit there and narrate 
your character. Well, my character is afraid, so my character is going to do this. You go, no. You sit there, I'm so angry right now. You don't even have to do that. You just... I think it's time to do something I'm going to regret. And then you turn to the DM and go, uh, I would like to rage. And then, you know, you go on from there. You know, things like that, breaking the mold. They're wonderful ways to create characters. Um, and the absolute best way to learn things like this is, is watch masters um, of their craft. Watch watch them play these, uh, you know, play characters that do this. Um, Dustin Hoffman is an absolutely brilliant, literally any movie that you watch, um, he will pr deliver a beautiful, a wonderful performance. Um, Kevin Spacey is another one who has this amazing uh, control of emotion and the ability to show it in very, very different ways. Um, the Usual Suspects is a brilliant, brilliant movie. Um, that shows uh, Kevin Spacey playing a, um, an incredibly complex character. And if you watch the physicality of what he does, it feeds into the emotional turmoil that his character himself is going through and, and, and the thought processes and everything like that. So, um, yes, uh, in the comments below, I know this is a little bit long, um, I would like to try something slightly different this time. Um, Normally, I've been asking you guys to talk about what, um, how the things we've done in these videos, um, how they've affected your table. I am going to backtrack just a little bit. Um, we've had two other physical uh, discussions. You know, the first one was about posture, and the second one was about doing something with your hands. Uh, so I'd like, to, uh, in the comments below, uh, first of all, have any of you guys tried changing your posture? when you're in character how, and how is that affected how you play your character, how um, you role play and not only how you role play your character, how you actually mechanically play your character. Have you guys tried using your hands? Have you, have you tried doing different things with your hands when you're role playing um, to further kind of emphasize what it is that you're doing? Anything like that, please put it in the comments below. Um, if you want a, uh, uh, practical examples of a lot of the stuff that I talk about. Um, I do run D&D games on my Twitch channel. It's twitch.tv slash uh, Jody every Tuesday night at either 8 or 8 or uh, 8.30 or 9 p.m. Central Time. Uh, so feel free to tune in there. Uh, otherwise, uh, starting on September the 30th, uh, I will be running uh, an Open Legend RPG for Zelda Universe set in the uh, uh, world of Breath of the Wild. Uh, and that'll be on twitch.tv slash Zelda Universe TV. So if you want to see some of this stuff in action, check out those. I play a ton of different characters on there. Um, and I use all of these things that I talk about when I portray the, the NPCs, the enemies, the allies, all that stuff. Um, so, yeah. Otherwise, um, that's all for me today. And I will see you guys next time. All right? Bye-bye.